Hi guys, this beautiful lens is the new Sigma 14mm f1.4 DGDN art lens, and this lens is nothing short of revolutionary. It is fantastic in so many ways. If you want to do indoor real estate, you want to do architecture, you want to do low light photography, astrophotographers, this is your new lens. Let's talk about what makes it so special. I did take this lens out and about here in Toronto and I took a lot of photos, but our sky is pretty hazy right now due to all of the wildfires here in Ontario, Canada, which a lot of people know. So uh, I will give credit to the other photographers who were nice enough to send me their images of their astrophotography work, which was going to be way, way better than mine anyway. So. So big thanks to Sigma Canada for loaning me this lens for review. Of course, I have to send it back and all the opinions are my own. Sigma doesn't care what I say. They're just like, here, test the lens, say whatever you want. And what I want to talk about are the standout features that make this a compelling buy for a lot of people. Of course, I'll talk about the drawbacks as the video goes on, but let's just start with the fact that it is 14 millimeters. It is ultra wide. It is as wide as you can get on a full frame camera without going into fisheye territory. So you don't want that bulbous look, but you want as wide as possible than 14 millimeters, which is why people love it for architecture and especially for astrophotography. Now in astrophotography, what you're going to want is a fast aperture. This 1.4 is the fastest one ever made, the fastest 14 millimeter ever made at 1.4 with uh, autofocus as well. This thing is just revolutionary. Even though people probably aren't going to use this lens for video and certainly not for vlogging, I couldn't help myself. It's 14 millimeters. I had to take it out, especially with the little ZV-E1 and its dynamic stabilization. Now, while I wouldn't call this exactly a vlogging lens due to its size and weight, you certainly can vlog with it. Look at this, I'm using the dynamic active stabilization, which crops in a fair bit, but as you can see, touching the lens, it is still plenty wide, and it's also the nighttime right now. But because I have an f1.4 and this fancy ZV-E1, I can vlog like it's the daytime. Isn't this fantastic? So, uh, you know, let's just say you're a real estate photographer, an astro photographer, but you occasionally like to turn the camera around and shoot your pretty face. Well, this lens does have you covered as long as you have pretty beefy shoulders. So there you go. It works really, really well. It's just not something I would want to carry around for a long period of time. And since Sigma is marketing this as the ultimate astrophotography lens, they came up with some really great solutions that have plagued astrophotographers for a lot of years. And uh, one is the manual focus lock. You see, there is a little switch, manual focus lock. So it will lock the rings. So basically, let's say you, you go to infinity when you are shooting your nighttime, your Milky Way and your stars, then uh, you go to infinity and then you can lock it by pressing that button and now when you turn the ring nothing will happen so there won't be any slippage as the night goes on if uh, you accidentally bump the lens you know you're doing some uh, long exposures you're going to be fine a lot of times what astrophotographers used to do is like put a piece of tape there to try to keep it there but you know as the night goes on and it gets colder sometimes the tape uh, you can just lose the adhesion and it just is it's a messy solution whereas this very elegant very well thought out speaking of well thought out because you will be shooting late in the night when it's often quite cold especially depending on your environment there is a little lip right here at the top so you can put on a cozy that is a heater for your lens to prevent the condensation another elegant solution thinking about the astrophotographers and their long nights out in iceland and norway doesn't stop there for the well thought out lens. It's got this shoe right here, which is first of all, Arca Swiss. Now, isn't that great? A lot of times the shoe for bigger lenses is not Arca Swiss for some reason, but this one is, which is great. And uh, this collar can be removed, but the reason they have it in there is that so the collar can actually, right there by the boot, it can be on the tripod and that way this front heavy lens is balanced well so it's easier to take those nighttime landscapes you know and then it won't tilt your tripod one way or the other balanced much better again very well thought out of course it has all of the other buttons and switches you might expect with the manual focus to autofocus focus hole button and uh, a aperture ring that can be clicked or declicked but there's also another button here on this side where you can lock the aperture ring so if you can lock it in in automatic mode so it never slips into uh, manual mode or you can uh, put it in the manual mode and then lock that so it never switches into automatic mode they're thinking see 
It's got their new HLA autofocus, the high response linear actuator, which actually puts it on par with the Sony autofocus. It is lightning fast. Of course, it is not compatible with Sony's uh, focus breathing compensation in the new lenses as that's reserved for specific Sony lenses. It is extremely sharp in the center, wide open, and also very sharp in the corners. So, which is great to have this ultra wide lens that is sharp, wide open, which is what you're gonna want for your astrophotography, just from center, right to the corner. The aberrations are extremely well controlled and uh, there's no coma smearing. It renders photos beautifully. It has wonderful coating that is extremely flare resistant. So bright lights, sun, you're not going to lose contrast. You're not going to get all kinds of ghosting. You know, if you can take actually uh, very nice sun star photos as well, and because it retains so much contrast, it is just a joy to use in the sunshine and bright lights. As long as you leave the in-camera corrections on and you use the profiles when you're doing raw photos, you're gonna see nice straight lines at this very wide angle and you aren't going to see any of that barrel distortioning or pincushioning. This one doesn't have pincushioning. It has a bit of barrel distortion when the camera corrections are off, which is to be expected with an element like this. But uh, once you have those corrections on, no problem. The lens is dust and moisture resistance. It has no stabilization inside and it is not a linear focus on the Sony system. For the L mount, you actually can program it to be linear focus. So that's a bonus for you L mount folks. The minimum focusing distance is 30 centimeters and that might sound like a lot, but not when you actually consider where your uh, sensor is. It's right here on this Sony. So 30 centimeters is like right here. So I was basically almost touching uh, items with the lens hood when I was photographing them. And uh, it was so great to be able to use that 1.4 and get that cool perspective, something sharp and in focus, and then uh, nice and big in the frame, and then that blown out background. Very cool look. The bokeh itself is lovely and soft. Now in terms of the bokeh balls, they're quite nice and there's not a lot of cat's eyeing, but they're also not going to be prominent in your frame with uh, a lens like this. Now, because the front element is so big, there's no filter thread on the front, so you can't use filters like ND filters or polarizers, but they do have a space for the filters at the back here. And it actually comes with this clever lens hood, which is not only locking, so it won't fall off, but it also has a space to uh, keep your little lens filters that you can fit in the back. You don't wanna store them there all the time, Sigma says, but when you're traveling, you can stick in the uh, lens filters right there and have them in your bag, nice and protected. So what are the drawbacks for the lens? I think the first one is pretty obvious. It is a very big and heavy lens. At 1160 grams, this is not one of your lightweight lenses, but because it's so good at what it does, I think a lot of astrophotographers especially are going to put up with that. It does exhibit some focus breathing, and during the focus breathing, you are going to see some warping as the barrel distortion moves in and out. So once again, that shouldn't be a problem for astrophotographers, but for people who are trying to do long focus pulls, or let's say you're trying to do landscape photography, where you are trying to stack your images, you may have some issues there. There is some longitudinal chromatic aberration at f1.4. It goes away by f 2.8, but on an ultra wide lens, generally that's not going to be much of an issue because of how you are shooting. And certainly for the astrophotographers, it's not going to be an issue. And the, and the last drawback is you can't use the front filters. A lot of people like to use polarizers when they are shooting landscapes, things like that. So uh, you have to use the back element and that can be a bit cumbersome for some people. So even with those drawbacks, I don't think that affects the target market of the astrophotographers. In fact, I think this is the ultimate astrophotography lens. There is uh, on the L mount for sure, no question. And on the Sony E mount, they have the 14 millimeter 1.8 G Master, which comes in at the same price, $1,600. Now that is a smaller, lighter weight lens. And if you want a general shooter, if you're doing a lot of daytime shooting and uh, landscapes, things like that, then maybe the Sony is the way to go. But if you are gonna be shooting in the dark, in very dim environments, especially astrophotography, boy, it's just, you can't do any better than this. So big thanks to Sigma Canada for sending this over for review. Those people are absolutely fantastic. And thanks to Sigma as well for coming out with a new innovation and pushing the entire industry forward and giving the astrophotographers something that they can drool over. We'll talk to you again soon. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye-bye.